people from Instagram are listening. There needs to be a cleaner way of going live and adding people to the live. Do we agree? I, I, I just think there should be. I agree. <laughs> so that you're not live the whole time. But now that we're live everywhere, hello everybody. It is Sunday morning here after Thanksgiving in the US. I am Linda Lippin from Linda Lippin Pilates, the Pilates teacher mastermind and the Strong Bones Osteoporosis Program. Um, as part of my work in Pilates Teacher Mastermind, as you guys know, I coach Pilates teachers and I really try to help us expand our visibility, Pilates businesses and money because I think money is important. I agree. <laughs> you agree? And to this end, I am here today with my friend, Monica Montre Scantleberry. The Scantleberry has just happened within the last, literally within the last several weeks. Uh, yeah. It's accurate <laughs> <and>, sometimes. <laughs> right? And Monica is a trusted business coach. Um, and her, interestingly enough, she is a New York City high school teacher. I am. <laughs> oh, thank you. People are saying congratulations. It's fun. It's fun to be here and be a New York teacher and doing all this. But we have so much we're, we're so connected, Linda. I'm so excited to share how we know each other. I know, because we know each other through multiple people going back many years, it turns out. So Monica and I first met. You guys always hear me talking about the advanced. The Advanced Women's Expert Network. It's like one of my favorite places to be, and I love it. And within the advanced, we have these little networking pods. And in... Our pods, we get the opportunity to basically dive deeper with people and really get to know them. And Monica showed up in my pod. Yeah. And then we started chatting because she's right over the bridge in Brooklyn. And we started talking and it turned out that we have all of these people in common. Like for me going probably back into college and grad school, uh, which is, a long time it was so and i would because when you said you're a pilates teacher i was like do you know so and so and i haven't i just remember you said yes i was like oh my gosh i've been waiting um because you know i've been coming to new york since i was in college well after college um and i've been dancing and taking pilates since it was like before it was cool right <laughs> and i've been teaching pilates for 32 years which was way before it was cool <laughs> And, you know, my academic background is I was a philosophy and women's studies professor. So we have that kind of academic stuff in common as well. So fun. <laughs> so fun. And now we do kind of different things. So part of what you do, Monica, so well is you help coach women who are developing their side hustle businesses, right? And who want to basically de develop more visibility, more new clients, more new customers in a limited amount of time because they all have full-time jobs. Yes, that, that's the key right there, limited amount of time. And even if you don't have a full-time job, we also don't have like, I feel like one of the things I've noticed is our businesses become just like work. And that's not really why I think most of us started a business was not to be working nine to five every day. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, there, there, is a, a, there is a point where you're like, okay, I am the CEO of this business and I should be able to control some of this. Um, and a lot of folks are really scared of social media. And that's really what it comes down to. People either love it or hate it. Um, people love and hate different platforms for different reasons. Um, I'm one of those just, I'm just pragmatic about it. I'm like, it exists. There's millions of people on it. It's a good way to reach people and it's free. Now, I don't know that it's like free, free because, you know, they're mining our data, they're mining our connections, they're making all kinds of money off of all of these, all of this. Um, yeah. I mean, that's how we have, you know, live video in our Facebook groups and like all this awesome stuff because they're mining our data <laughs> and making money off of it. So I think once, you know, we all reconcile with that, then it's fine. 
I agree. It's and I always think like mm. when I first started, I was like, I always tell the story that for people who don't know, I, you know, I started using Instagram really in my forties, and I was a yoga teacher here in New York City. And you know how that is. Like you get your you get your certification, you have to find clients, but how can you find clients if you don't have a place to teach at? And I was like, huh, and I don't have any money to like advertise. So that's when I was like, well, let me try this thing called Instagram. Lots of yogis like Instagram. And that's really how I decided to like give up my time. I feel like it's cost time, right? Like it's either going to cost you, my say it's going to cost you money to get visible or time to get visible. And I decided I would invest time and not my money. Okay. So first of all, that's an interesting distinction. And I think that for a lot of us, um, a lot of people don't realize they can farm it out. <laughs> yes. So there is always an option, my friends, for those of you who really are feeling that time crunch and just really want to get it done and have some money, you can actually farm it out. Um, what do you think about that? I like that idea. I'm actually probably looking to give mine up. But what I always tell people is we are the people that we hire can't do what we want them to do unless we're clear with what we want to do. So that's where working with someone like me comes into play. So I always think it's important to invest a little bit of money into it, whether it's like hiring a strategist like me who can think about what do you want? Because I remember when I first started working, I had no idea. I was just one day I would post about Instagram or about Instagram sales. And one day I post about yoga and my coach, my coach friend said like, who are you and what do you post about? I didn't have a clear strategy. So I wasn't converting anyone because Nobody knew what I was there for. So I do think that you can absolutely farm it out, but we have to remember that the person we're asking to do our work for us, if they don't know what we want, they can't possibly give us what we desire. So no, when you give your VA or you give your social media manager your, your stuff, make sure that you know, like, I want to, I want clients. I want people to come and hire me. I want to talk about this. And here's what I don't talk about. Um, I've also seen people like hire a, and they'll be like, why, why do I have all these moms hiring, like following me? I don't talk at all about moms. Or I had a pet coach once and she was like, why are all these people following me? None of them have dogs. And I was like, that's because the person who's doing your engagement for you, that's who they know. Right. So it's being very clear with who, when you hire somebody out that you've had a conversation with them and they know who you are and what you want them to do. And this is where it's probably also helpful to have a nice feed of stuff you've done. Yes. So that they're like, oh, this is how she presents herself and this is what she talks about. And maybe we tweak it a little bit, but they have a template. Absolutely. The concept? Yeah. Templates, concepts, just in who you like. I always, in my, um, in my collections, I have like who I follow and who I don't follow. So that if I do give this up to someone, like they can look and say like, Monica doesn't follow these type of people. Monica doesn't engage with these type of people. Um, just because I think that's really important that my brand stays on brand regardless of who's managing my social media right because it always should look like it's coming from you that's the whole that's the whole concept right? yes. <laughs> people should look at it and not think oh they hired somebody to do their social media <laughs> and i am very good i can tell generally right away like when somebody is not doing it themselves because I don't see them on their social media. And so many people are like, I don't want to be on my social media, but it's your social media. We want to see you. So even if you hire someone out and they're using stock photos, like still give them images of you because you are your brand, whether your name is your brand or not. Right now, I mean, for Pilates instructors and you know, you're a yoga instructor, so you know, we are our brand. I don't, I don't really care if you have a studio that has a different name or a slightly different business name. We are ultimately the brand. Um, you know, I used to work at Real Pilates, but in the Pilates world, you think Real Pilates, Alicia and Garo. They go together. Right? 100%. And, and, these, and it's important, you know, to understand that people associate us with our brand. And it's because your class, right? Like your style of instruction, even if you've been under the lineage of somebody else, you are your brand. And so when I was thinking about, when I was teaching yoga, people came to my yoga class because of the way I taught. So when I was teaching, even if I was showing up at a studio, they came for me. Right. Uh, 
interesting comment that we just got is that sometimes if you hire outside of the country for, to do your managed social media, those folks might not have access to some of the same features we do. Yeah, this so is such somebody a good just point. commented that they hired outside of the country for social media and their managers didn't have access to Reels. It's such an important point. And so I always say, like, if you are going to hire, know the questions to ask. Like, ask someone, do you have access to Instagram Reels? And it's okay if they don't. Then what Thank is you for that, plan? Nina. That was important, by the yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> such an important point. Like, and if um, my thing is, like, I've asked somebody before, like, you know, you live in a country that doesn't have Reels. How do you work around this? Because a good social media manager will know the answer. They will say, like, this is how I work around it versus, like, Oh, it's not a big deal because it is a big deal. There's reels. There's other, uh, there's other particular things that with Instagram in different countries, and it's it has nothing to do. It's just random, if I'm quite honest. I think it has. I can't really say why, but it's such a good point. Right, and sometimes I think it also has to do with just whatever that country's regulations are on speech, on you you know what's kind of coming out and how they want to push back sometimes against the social media companies and, <laughs> and people that, who, who are involved. And we just kind of have to go along, you know, with that flow, with that ride. It's, it's like how we didn't have access to, uh, to links in our stories for so long. And then all of a sudden we woke up one morning and everyone had links. You, yeah. And, um, so Mina is saying a lot of, I mean, I'm actually the person who shares that information on Clubhouse all the time that if you, you want to ask the person who's doing it, they should technically get it back. They didn't have to create a new account. Um, if you lose your reels, you just want that person. You have to totally take the person who's managing your social media out of your account. And then it, it takes a while for it to come back. But this is absolutely true. It can happen to you for so many reasons. Um, and also just to note too, like social media changes. I've, I have 10,000 followers and one day I lost my, um, your reels, I lost my timer and I was like having a connection. I was like, I'm doing a course on how to, how to do your own reels and I didn't have access to that. Um, so it is something that you just, and then it just came back. I messaged Instagram no response. I mean, they respond like a month later and all of a sudden mm -hmm. one day it was back. So I do think that sometimes uh, it is important to just like give it time and space. And I will say that the majority of countries I think are slowly getting these uh, features. Right. And then you'll also see sometimes that, you know, like on Facebook the other day, you know, I've got like, I don't know, half a million like my page requests. Right. So I decided to just start to go through them. And you do a few of them in one day and Facebook's like, yeah, you can't like anything else now for a while. It and happens. I'm like, okay. It's so <laughs> random. And I would say that that's Whatever. Like a really, this is something that I've, I've been talking about too, because when we talk about getting visible on social media, like so many of us are waiting for Instagram or Facebook to, or Clubhouse even to say like you can monetize. And I really just think that you can monetize whenever you're ready to. So, so many people are waiting for links and stories for the swipe up feature. And honestly, that's not how people really buy. Like, it's great to have a link in your Instagram story, but I still find most of my sales come when I tell people, like, DM me the word Instagram and I'll send you the link. And people still want that, like, the swipe up. And by the way, the swipe was there. You just have to pay for an ad. But I also use Buy Me a Coffee. Like, I, so I have badges now on Instagram, which are worth like pennies. But you don't have to wait for Instagram to give you a badge. If you want to host a Pilates class live on Instagram and get paid for it, create a buy me a coffee link or buy me a tea link or buy me a taco link. And then you can tell people we don't have to wait for Instagram to give you permission to, um, to monetize. And that's something I think I didn't realize until I just started to think when I was like, why am I waiting? Why am I waiting for social media to say like, you can or you can't do this? I'm the CEO right. of my business. <laughs> I can do what I want. Exactly. And you can share links to anywhere. So it's not like you can't share a link to get paid. <laughs> and it's like I was doing a live about somebody's like, oh, your link isn't clickable. And I was like, well, just put your link inside of your Instagram bio or inside of your Facebook bio and tell people if you're enjoying this class and you want to support me, click on my link inside my bio. It's called Buy Me a Coffee. It's five dollars, fifteen dollars, whatever you feel is right. And I love that so much better since I know a lot of your audience are Pilates instructors. I love that so much better than saying it's a donation based coffee. It's not a donation based coffee. It's not a donation based class. Excuse me. It's like a real class. I get paid 
And whether you pay $5 or $20, it's not a donation. That money is actually coming to me and it's helping me be able to keep my business running. Yeah, there seems, have you noticed that, especially within the kind of yoga Pilates dance community, there's this very real uh, contingent that doesn't seem to think we should be making money. <laughs> And it we're really charging for, for our work. Yeah, it happens with content creators. Anybody, like, we're afraid. And here's my thing. Like, you mentioned I'm a high school teacher, and I always think of it this way. Like, my students don't do what I want them to do unless I tell them. And I don't teach babies. I teach 16, right. 17, 18, 19 year old people, um, humans, and I, they don't do what I want them to do unless I say, like, can you please do that? And the same thing happens to adults. Like, adults don't pay sometimes until we ask them, like, here's how you can compensate me. And it's not, it's okay. Like we just don't have to, we don't have to just hope. It's not hope and pray somebody pays you. Like tell them, here's how you can pay me on social media. Here's how you can, you know, if you like this class, you can do this. Um, so that's just something I think is really important for whether you're a content creator, whether you're a Pilates instructor, a yoga instructor, and you're growing your business, tell people how to pay you. Exactly. And people forget that, that we do have to lead them through. So talk to me for a second, because I know you focus mostly on Instagram and Clubhouse. Um, I, I know, you know, here on, so on Instagram, I tend to find that the movement instructors posts go two different ways. Um, one is extraordinarily performative. Here I am doing crazy stuff on the Cadillac. Here I am doing this awesome upside down on one arm and elbow like thing. Um, and I also noticed that like most of my clients are scared by that. A lot of them tell me that they come to me specifically because I don't do that. Um, partly because my 55 year old body doesn't do all that anymore, um, nor does it need to. And I'm perfectly fine without it. And, and, you know, that it's just not my audience, but I do find that for a lot of my Pilates teacher clients, that they're having issues finding clients on Instagram and connecting with people on Instagram because they're not sure kind of how to go about presenting themselves and posting. We either do personal posts or performative posts, and no one's really sure what to do in the middle of that. Yeah, so the two top ways that I would love for anyone who's listening to think about, regardless of if you're starting off as an instructor or further along, I'm going to say two, I'm going to say the first word that you're probably not going to like, but doing Instagram reels, and you don't have to like, you don't have to dance, you don't have to sing. In fact, my favorite way of doing Instagram reels right now is to find a lip syncing one and talk over it. So for example, if you go to my Instagram reels, there's one when I, I'm just looking at the camera, making a face. And it's like when somebody says that they need to have 10,000 followers to get uh, clients. And the sound is like, it's like, it drives me crazy or something. And I feel like that could be a great one for a Pilates instructor to say like, when, when a client thinks that they have to be able to like do a back bend before they can take a Pilates class, right? Like addressing that objection, like, I was a yoga teacher. I sold out my classes in New York City and I still, for the life of me, cannot do a headstand, cannot do a handstand. I don't like to do inversions. Like my favorite inversion is legs up the wall. We're good, right? So like you, I don't have to be able to do a headstand to be able to be a great yoga instructor. There is, listen, that wasn't even probably a part of like, it just doesn't have to happen. So some reels that are super quick and engaging. Um, I love reels for that purpose. And again, you don't have to sing, you don't have to dance, you don't have to point, you don't have to like do any of this if you don't want to, but you can if you want to, but you don't have to. And I also did a recent reel that I made on Canva that was just, it was just slides, right? That I set to a video. And so you could potentially do an Instagram reel of the benefits of Pilates. The whole point of a reel is that you're utilizing a function of Instagram. We have to sometimes beat Instagram at its own game. So you can do that. Mm. Then the next type so of the algorithm, the, the algorithms like it when you use all the stuff. Is yeah, they like it when you use all the stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they don't care if you sing and dance when you use all the stuff. They just want you to use all the stuff, right? So like, it's like beating them at their own game. And then the second thing that they really like us to do is something called a carousel post, which is when you have multiple posts and they swipe through. 
So what I think about when I think about Pilates is doing one that says like why Pilates is better than and then put like a name your like you don't have to call out yoga if you don't want to like I'm a yoga instructor you don't have to call it out for those of you I'm also a Pilates I've done Pilates so I'm talking about this from like a educated perspective but then in each slide you could have like one of the benefits of Pilates and you and I spoke about that I'm you know going through menopause early because of surgery and I need to build up my my bone strength so Pilates would be a better choice for me than cycling although I do love me some Peloton like you could talk about like why Pilates instead of cycling why pilates instead of dancing why pilates instead of this you're doing a carousel post and you're giving really great content people sleep on the carousel post and they don't have to have pictures of you if that's not what you're thinking of but i feel like for if you're trying to get clients to see you and you're like i don't want to do another like i'm not gonna buy i'm not gonna sign up for a photography shoot use carousels Mm -hmm. now do you find that the that the live video is getting as much traction as it used to? Um, yes and no. I think that oftentimes what we forget with live videos, so the difference between a live now and like 18 months ago is the live doesn't stay active inside of your screen. So as soon as you turn off your live, right, it goes away. So you have to make sure to save your live. But I think what right. the best point with lives now, there's two additional features that have just been added. You can tell people to hit the reminder and it will like send them a reminder that you're going to go live. I think that's so important. We forget to tell people like, Hey, I'm going to be live. We forget to like invite people in. And then the other part about live now is you can make a post on your Instagram feed that will have like a little calendar next to it. So now it can be a part of your Instagram feed, which I think is really helpful. I still think that Instagram lives are powerful. They're how people buy. They break down. If you're a theater person, they break down the fourth wall. People get to hear, they get to see, they get to even experience what it's like to be in a practice with you. And then I always think that you should save your live. Even if you don't post it right away to your, to your grid, you have this piece of content that you can repurpose and I'm all about repurposing. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why I do my lives the way I do them. So that we kind of have access to the replays and the stuff is everywhere and can be shared and, and, and all of that. And one thing for repurposing that we forgot forgot to mention, Linda, I don't know if I told you this, is if you have Otter running while you're doing your live, you then are getting a transcript and you could turn that into a blog post. It could turn into the caption of what you're doing. If you're like potentially leading a class and you wanted to send that to a client, you could then send them the transcript of you teaching the class. Not sure if anybody wants to do that. You can run Otter while you're doing your live. What I've always done is done my live and then uploaded it to Otter and then had Otter deal with it. I, I it never even occurred to me. Yeah, <laughs> you can have it at the same time. You can have it running. Sometimes I, I'll forget and I'm like going to start it after I'm done. Um, but I met Simon on Clubhouse, who's one of the vice presidents of Otter, and he was showing that there's a way because in Clubhouse now you can get if you have an iPhone, you can get transcriptions. But it's not run through Clubhouse. It's run through your iPhone. So you could actually be running your Otter in the background so that while you're, like, talking. Because that's always been people's, like, biggest issue in Clubhouse is there's no saving. Right. There's no saving, right? So now there's a replay. And you can use Otter in the background. So I really, you know, it just occurred to me that if you're leading a Pilates class live, you're doing a section of it. Maybe you're doing the floor, the standing work, that you could be running the Otter in the background. And then all of a sudden you have this opportunity to like share that with people who, who want to, you can put them on your close friends list and send them the replay. Cause now we have links. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, Patricia is here with us. Hey, Patricia. Another person from our networking pod. I love it. Lots of potting going on. (laughs) Now, I, I don't know if you've ever searched out Pilates on Clubhouse, but it is pitiful. Mm. There is like no Pilates. There are no Pilates teachers on Clubhouse. So as usual, I'm thinking about just jumping on in and and starting some Pilates conversations over there. So talk to me about how Pilates teachers can do that. How we even, I mean, I've been on Clubhouse for a year. Am I ever really there? No, unless somebody invites me to one of their things. And then I'm like, oh, I'll go. Yeah. I think how Pilates instructors could potentially be using Clubhouse is to collaborate with other people who are outside of Pilates instructors. So maybe joining up with a Reiki instructor or a yoga instructor or a dance instructor and talking about, you know, 
when I think about Pilates, I know that there's the jump board, but it's it's overall it's not very hard on your joints. It's not something that is going to be pounding. So teaming up with people who are in a similar field and talking about like how to how to get you know how to move your body that's safe for your joints, right? And you're talking about the different ways. So there's this whole idea that you can talk about it. You can be talking about, I think about the idea of menopause and women over the age of 40 and just how Pilates is a really great tool inside of your fitness routine. And so it's time, it's team up with health coaches. So when I think about, I think what happens sometimes in um, a clubhouse is we can think it has to be just me. And I want to say that I think the more people you bring into your clubhouse room and talk, the more that you have the chance to reach other people. And it does not, it could be that you decided to lead people in the hundred or a different sort of exercise that you verbally um, are articulating, but also I just think having a conversation about people. And then what's really cool is if you're moderating, you can put up links. So this is where you get the chance to say like, hey, I'm leading a class here. Here's the Eventbrite link to sign up. Um, it's really that to me is the benefit of it. So I would definitely say like to talk to them in that way, but also there's a lot of business building that can happen inside of this space. So if you are, you know, it's huge right now inside of corporate health to bring in yoga instructors. So like if you're a Pilates instructor, getting into rooms where there are corporate people who are talking about how they want to bring corporate wellness to there. So on mm -hmm. Clubhouse, I would go to the Universal Bar and I would type in like corporate wellness and see who's talking about corporate wellness and see what type of conversations you can start there. Because I imagine as more people are heading back into the office that, you know, corporations are having a hard time getting people to come back to work. Let's be real. So being able to say like, we have a wellness addition. I think that that's a place that you can start those conversations on clubhouse. If that's yeah. interesting. Um, the other weird, okay, so I'm going to just share a, some weird experiences that I've had on Clubhouse. Yeah. Um, because they're part of the reason why I didn't go back, actually, is that if I'm in defined rooms with people I know and like, <laughs> it's fine. But I am relatively introverted, <laughs> which is, is uh, you know, which is the, true of a lot of us. So me getting out there is not very like easy or my natural state of being to begin with. <laughs> but secondly, I've ended up sometimes in these rooms with all of these like bros. I don't know how else to put it. These bros who are like all into their own social media stuff. They've all app developed. They're all like, like the whole thing is them going like, yeah, DM me here, DM me there, I'll send you this, I'll send you that. And at the end of it, I'm like, and sometimes I have actually DM'd them when they've asked me to. Do they ever get back? No, no, because it's really all about them like beating their chest on stage. <laughs> How do we yeah. avoid that, navigate yeah. through that, yeah. deal with that? That's a whole new thing. Well, I will say this. One thing that Instagram has added now is the back channel. Or not Instagram, I want to say that Clubhouse has now has a back channel. So you can like message people directly on the app. I will say that this has brought in the advent, uh, the advent or the introduction of the Clubhouse gentlemen, you know, the ones on Instagram who hit you up in the back channel and say that they, they, they're looking at the sugar daddy ones. They are now on Clubhouse. Yeah. So I do try to avoid them. But um, what I like about the Clubhouse back channel is that it gives you a moment when somebody is talking to be able to message them directly on Clubhouse versus having to go to their Instagram where maybe everybody else is. So I try to think about like where I want to connect with people. Um, the other thing is I try to think about the rooms that if I'm going into a room, I, I tend to not go into rooms where there's a lot of like bros. I don't, I just, they, I, I've learned mm -hmm. to like know where they are. And I go to like the similar rooms over and over. Not that women, and to be quite honest, there are some women who are very masculine inside of their sales. I don't oh, yeah. the same way. Um, but I've just tried to find a few rooms that I really like and I go where those people are. So example, like Patricia and I were doing something on Tuesday, like, I'll try to go to the rooms where I know there's going to be people. And then what I do have to say about Clubhouse, so there was a huge, you know, everybody a year ago was on Clubhouse. I was one of the first people there, had fun, got tired of it, took a break, and I'm coming back. And I'm finding that that's where a lot of people are because people got burned out. They were in those 24-hour rooms. It was, you know, my husband now, but at that time he was my 
Beyonce would be like, it's date night and you're still on your phone. Like, and he'd be like, I'd have my ears in. I'm talking on Clubhouse, right? It, it probably was why we had some arguments. Um, but I think people are a little bit more responsive now to like only being on Clubhouse for 16 months. I've heard people say like, this room is ending. Like we can't talk anymore. So I think that there's a little bit more honoring the fact that like Clubhouse is super addictive. Um, mm -hmm. But like, I always like to think of it as I can get a lot done in the time that I'm on Clubhouse because I can talk to people while they're on stage. Like I can message them. Um, but I do think the it's was really going in with a strategy. Yeah, have a strategy. I didn't have a strategy at first. And I remember I would spend hours. I would like, whew, I was in a room. I hosted a room one time that I was like, I'm only going to be in here for 30 minutes. And I was in that room for two and a half hours because I didn't have boundaries. Like I didn't know how to say to someone, we need to end this room. And so it is really just having, if you're going to host a room, telling people from the, inside the thing, this is a 30 minute room. If you're on there, set your timer for 15 or 20 minutes and leave. And here's the cool thing is people don't usually get offended when you leave because they kind of know like that's the clubhouse mindset is like come in and leave. So being able to, and now that there's a back channel, you can say like, I'm leaving. But I definitely think it's important. To, the universal search is so key now. Linda, you can just go in there and type in like what you want to find. And it, it really is super helpful. And find those rooms. Is it also useful to start your own room? Um, and are there kind of rules or like not rules, but are there things around that? Should it be at like the same time and same day every week? Should it be like, and that way you can talk about it in between? Yeah, I definitely think best practice is to start a room. I like to start a room with somebody else. So find somebody to reach out and say like, Hey, would you be interested in collaborating in a room? Definitely going up like in doing your room every the same time for a month or two to give people time. And now um, I love I love this tip that was just shared about like going into the room to like connect is so important. Um, and what I also really like, this is new too, is you now can do replay. So now Clubhouse records, which they previously didn't do. So if you're doing a room every week and even if no one comes, still present your workshop. I think sometimes we can get a little bit like, oh, you know, nobody came. I'm going to be on here for five minutes and then I'm going to leave. But just start giving your conversation or start leading whatever you're doing because it, it can be recording and that can go on your replay so it gives you a chance for people who couldn't come like we also i think one thing that we asked about lives earlier is our time zones affect people like we're in the same time zone um right, but right. somebody who's in california probably isn't up yet so it's great that we're recording this so they can catch it later um that was a big issue with clubhouse it was very a lot of fomo people were staying up all hours just because they didn't want to have fomo and now that there's replays, like host your room, do your conversations, your replay is going to exist on your page as long as you have it set up. Great. And is that on Android as well as iPhone? Do you know? It's yeah, the on, replay it's in the app. yeah, the replay is in the app. The that's only thing that's great. not on Android right now is the um, in-app uh, transcription service because that's coming through the, uh, the iPhone. But the replays work on all versions and conceivably you could then repurpose the replay yeah so as long as you so Podcast, the person who started the room run them through another live do whatever you want That's yep you crazy. can you can download them and then rip the rip the um the audio so a lot of people are running their podcasts now through clubhouse because you're getting in front of this audience. You no longer have to tell people they're being recorded it says replays on so it's pretty obvious the really cool thing too is Linda if Let's say we had done this as a replay, or Patricia and I, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a clubhouse room on Tuesday. We'll turn the replay on. If somebody watches that replay on Thursday, it'll be like they're in the room, like they will actually enter into the room and they just can't get on stage, but it'll be like they're in the moment. And here's the really cool thing: you can be in two places at once now in Clubhouse because you can watch your own replay. So you'll see yourself on stage, but you'll be in the audience. It's got some like cool kind of like and that means that you can still be there for answering questions and doing all of that. Um, yeah, and you can still like, great. I just think there's a, there's some cool things that Clubhouse is doing. So I know a lot of people said Clubhouse is dead. I don't think Clubhouse is quite dead. I think it's, I think we're just getting more savvy about how we're utilizing social media. Um, but Clubhouse is a great way to grow your Instagram. And I would say it's a great way to collaborate and connect. And so you're not finding, you know, an interesting thing that a lot of my clients say to me is that 
they feel like Instagram is a much younger audience. Like this has been the kind of the ongoing conversation that I've had with people. They're always like, the Instagram is just a younger audience. Like they're all kids. And I'm like, I actually don't feel like that. I feel like actually most of the kids are now on TikTok <laughs> and other places. Yeah. And that, in, you know, all of my friends who are in their 40s and 50s and 60s have Instagram accounts, whether they post regularly or just as an account to scroll. And that's what I think we need to remember is there are a lot of folks who keep these accounts, not as active posting accounts, but simply because they want to be able to see other people's stuff. They want to be able to see what you do and they may be buyers. 100%. That's like such an important thing. And I would also say that like, if, if you're not getting seen on Instagram, I want you to consider like, especially if you're in, in your 35 to 55 or 65, think about the hashtags of your, what your ideal client is hanging out on. So I think about like, I still have my hair color, but one of my clients is silver. She has gotten so huge by simply using the hashtag silver sisters. She has a book coming out called Rock Your Midlife. And she talks about her journey with silver hair. And that hashtag is gigantic. Like, so if you're looking to engage with women who are in their 50s and their 60s, start looking at the hashtags and you're going to be blown away because it's like a whole, the other thing is, I think this happens probably to you to Pilates teachers. It happens to yoga. It happens to me as a business coach. We think there are so many people who are doing what we're doing, but that's because the algorithm is feeding you what it thinks you want to see. So if you're not seeing women who are your ideal client, then it's our responsibility to go and find those women so that Instagram then gives us their content, whether that is to start to look for Silver Sisters hashtag or, you know, over 40 and fabulous, start engaging with that. For the longest time, Instagram was showing me tons of nails. I was getting married and all I was doing was looking at nails. So Instagram, <laughs> I wanted to see nails and I was like, I and. I don't want to see nails, right? It took me having to retrain Instagram. So if you're not seeing your ideal client, you got to retrain Instagram by going to engage with your ideal client. Right. And I think that everybody, I mean, I, I very, I very purposefully keep myself away from devices that record randomly. Right. I like, we got rid of our um, echo. We don't have an Alexa anymore. I, you know, I've got 4,000 devices in my house. Like I've got timers, I've got clocks. I, I, I can bring up songs on my phone. I was like, I don't need something recording me. But what I want people to remember is that if you're walking around with your Samsung watch or your iWatch or whatever you're doing, that that thing is recording you. And the things you talk about <laughs> while it's on, are going to affect what social media feeds you. Yeah, it's so true. And it does. I've, I've, I've had clients text me after a session that they're getting fed now ads and posts about stuff we've talked about in the session. Wow. So you got to train your social media <laughs> in a very real way. And I would say too that like if you're using hashtags like Pilates teachers or Pilates, Joe Pilates, you're using hashtags that are describe who you are, you're going to see people right, who right. look just like you. So it's super important. Like for the longest time when I was writing Instagram coach, the people who were following me were Instagram coaches because that's who Instagram's like, oh, you want to see Instagram coaches? We got you. Don't worry. Instead of it being like saying things like, Instagram 101 or Instagram tips and tricks, things that other people, it broadens your reach. So if you're only seeing Pilates teachers and you're like overwhelmed by seeing the Pilates person who's doing the thing that's not even a part of your brand, stop using the hashtag Pilates teachers and right. use something, you know, when I was doing yoga, I started using hashtags like everybody yoga and yoga for everybody and yoga, thinking about the different ways because I didn't want to keep on seeing, I mean, I'm flexible, but I'm not that flexible. And I was seeing people doing all these crazy yoga poses, you know, like dancer pose that's really gymnastics and not true yoga. And I had to retrain that that's not who I wanted to see in my right. feed. And that's not the type of yoga I was going to be putting out 
either. And that's like really important, I think, for any of us. Because the other thing I would say, probably to anybody who's watching this who feels like your ideal client's not on Instagram, they are on Instagram. You might not have taken the time to try to find them. And Instagram, it does take time. Like you have to, you got to do some searches. So I would say if you're looking to find people who want to practice Pilates, it's going to find those Pilates instructors, those big names, but also looking to see, you know, where else would a person who's practicing Pilates probably be hanging out? Maybe they're on Peloton. You don't have to engage with Peloton, but you can use Peloton to like see the people just in Pilates, you know, Peloton teaches Pilates, but the person who practices Peloton Pilates could also be your ideal client because I, I'm on Pilates, I'm on Peloton. Their Pilates classes aren't going to be the same thing I'm necessarily yeah. looking for, but they right. will find your clients. But this is where, of course, you have to come into it knowing yeah. a little bit your niche, your ideal client and all of that, because if you're a Pilates or yoga teacher and you're coming into social media and you're literally thinking that you're selling to everybody, that everybody is your potential client, that you can help all people, which we can, we know that, we know we can help all people, but that's not the way any of this works. <laughs> not the way any of this works. Because it is true that when you market to everybody, you market to nobody. There's a reason why if you're watching Saturday morning cartoons with your kid, you're getting fed very different advertising than if you're sitting there at night watching Narcos. I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's so important. And I'm interested to see, you know, since I've had this surgery, like now I don't need feminine products. So I'm interested to see, like, how will my marketing change, right? Like, and how will things change? And it's so key, too, that, again, it's important for me to when I go on social media to engage with the people who are my ideal clients, not necessarily with the people who are just like me, who are doing the same thing I'm doing. That can be great to help give me content ideas and see what is like the marketplace. But also I don't want to sell to another Instagram coach or another like high ticket coach. I want to work with people who are thinking about side hustling and I need to not, if I type in side hustle, I find other side hustle coaches. I need to think right. about who might want a side hustle. And that's the who number, I the number of Pilates teachers who post their classes and their consumer focused content in groups of Pilates teachers is always amazing to me. Cause I'm like, unless we, unless one of us happens to be your ideal client, like I get a lot of Pilates instructors who have been diagnosed with low bone density because they want somebody who's a peer who has been teaching at least as long as they have, right? Who knows both classical and contemporary, who's like not, you know, stick in the mud, but knows the work and it's going to keep them safe and keep them moving. So I do a little bit of sharing, right, within Pilates instructor groups, but very targeted to if you are a Pilates teacher with osteoporosis. And that's so important, too, just right there, like even saying like knowing who I talk a lot. So I not only talk about social media, but I help people create their offers. But I'm not going to go into a group where there's a ton of other coaches and talk about that. What's important is if I can connect with you, I know that you have a problem with selling something and you want to know how to use social media. The rest of it I can all do later, but it's really important to like find that one spot that like what sets you apart, what differentiates you from the next coach. And you've done that applies even when I was teaching yoga, like I would, you know, my yoga class was very different. And I would talk about that. What makes me different than another um, yoga teacher? And that just, that's key because people like they like diversity. And so, Yeah. If you're on social media and you're doing Pilates and you're like, my clients aren't here. There's just so many Pilates teachers. What makes you different? What makes you a special Pilates instructor? Is it that you have a, like I have a dance background. So I talked about that when I was teaching yoga. So people who came to my yoga class were always like, this feels like it's a dance class. And I was like, great. I've done my job. Like right. that's, I that's what I want. <laughs> you know? Right. Like I got, I actually, um, the last class I taught before Thanksgiving on Wednesday, 
one of my strong bones clients who's been with me for well over a year now, she took a regular mixed level class for me. And then she took a, you know, specific strong bone modified class. And she actually said to me, the flow of the regular mat feels to me like dance. And she's an ex gymnast and an, now an academic. And she's like, I love that. But it's actually easier mm. than the modified strong bones class, which is much harder for me, kind of digs deeper into the places that I need to dig. And that was, you know, that was kind of very, very interesting feedback for me, but also lets me know some of what I want to talk about in my stuff going forward, right? Is the fact that the modified work can be as difficult, if not more so. Yeah, it's, uh, one of my friends um, was diagnosed with like stage one, I believe, breast cancer and now teaches oncology yoga. She teaches a regular yoga class, but she also teaches an oncology yoga class and being able to differentiate like I can do both. But also like if you need this, this is what I recommend for you. And it's so it's so important, whatever you're like teaching, because there's not. You think when I hear Pilates, like the 20 year old Monica who's introduced to Pilates by Patrick would have thought that there was only one version of Pilates. But now that I'm more sophisticated in my Pilates experience, I recognize that there are a wide variety of ways to teach Pilates. And that's like so my coach talks a lot about sophisticated buyers. And I think people are more sophisticated now that we've been at home for 18 months. They realize that. And so it's part of if you're, how can I sell more on Instagram? It's getting more sophisticated. And that is a part of niching is getting more sophisticated and talking about, here's what we're not going to do in my Pilates class. And here's what we are going to do. And here's how my Pilates class is different than the Pilates class that you might have gotten if you'd come to a studio. Right. 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 That, because sometimes it. folks with me are like, well, we didn't do any inversions. There wasn't a lot of leg overhead. And I'm like, right, because I teach for people with low bone density and they'll crack a thoracic vertebrae doing, <laughs> doing that kind of work. So we don't do that. Yeah. Do I think it's bad work? No, I don't. Do I think it's bad when you have low bone density? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and that's, that's like so important too. A lot of people will say like, if you come to me for social media and you came to hit 10,000 followers, I might not be the coach for you. I can think of a bunch of coaches who will get you to 10,000 followers, but 10,000 followers isn't, it's a magic number in some ways. It's like, great. gives you some credibility, but there's tons of people who have 10,000, 20,000, a hundred thousand followers and make zero money in their business because they have followers who don't love them. So if you come and work with me, I want you to find followers who are clients. I want you to find the people who know, love and trust you and tell you everybody about your work. That's who I, that's how I want you to grow your social media. And that's like such a different way than like, if you want to be an influencer, I have the person for you, but it's not me. And that's okay. Right. And frankly, the whole being an influencer thing um, is not so thrilling. I, I'm serious. Like I get pissed. <laughs> Several times a day, every single day, from brands who want to work with me somehow, want me to put, blog about them, post about them, talk about them, whatever. And I partner with very, very few of them. And it happens to usually be the ones I use, right? So I have a partnership with Physical Mind Institute because I love all of their gear and I especially love the typhoid and the parasitter. Love them. I connect with territory foods because I eat their food <laughs> at least once a day. <laughs> it's like such an easy sell then, right? Because it's, right? it's, it's, it's an easy selling. sell. When the folks at Yondo, you know, approached me, I, I, that was actually one that for the first time I took a really careful look at their product. I negotiated with them for a pro account versus a basic account because I was like, if you want me to show how I can grow my business, using your platform to help, it needs to be able to handle my business and <laughs> your basic account ain't gonna, isn't gonna do it. And now we're happily working together. You, you know, so there are those things, but 
I get the, all of it, the diet teas, the, I sent naked nutrition, the thing going, sorry, um, protein shakes are gross. Yeah. Um, I don't suggest people use them unless they absolutely have to. Um. <laughs> I have so many protein shakes here because I've unfortunately said yes to so many of them. I'm thinking right. you don't have to have one for lunch. <laughs> I can and just I used to too, and then I'd feel compelled to drink them, and then it was so unsatisfying. And it's like, you know, at least when I whip out my territory tonight, it's beef ragu with, <laughs> yeah. with, pot, with noodles and, and broccoli. So I'm good with that. And that's so important, too, because if you're newer, if you're a Pilates instructor or yoga teacher or a coach, and you're, like, saying yes to every single brand, your account becomes – all about the brands and not about you right. and so you know when i was teaching yoga for those for the years here in new york city i was super connected with athleta and so it was i was teaching yoga class for them i was wearing their clothes it made a lot of sense um and i would get pitched all the time to wear other people's clothes and i was like so i mean am i gonna do fabletics and uh, athleta and lululemon and and then all of a sudden all of these posts are about the clothing and not about like me because I am my brand. So when you are saying yes to brands, it really is it, more. is not always better. Find the brands that like you can easily talk about because the other thing is nobody, unless you're an influencer who's literally getting paid by brands, nobody wants to hear about brands on every single post. No, they don't. Most of the time, nobody cares. Every once in a while, someone's like, oh, those leggings are awesome. Where did you get them? Right. But generally, no one really cares. They just want your information. That's really what, what they want to see. So Monica, how can people work with you more? Yeah. Talk to us. <laughs> so I'm taking clients right now, whether it is to just understand how to use your Instagram better, whether it is to think about how to sell. So you can go ahead and just DM me. That's probably the easiest way to start a conversation. And I'll share with you what you I have. I work with clients in a one-to-one -one setting. So I have some Instagram clients who we talk through, we move through. So if you're like, I don't want to do another Instagram course, I've done that. And that's not for me. I've got you. have got some one-to-one -one coaching. If you are like, I really just want the information. Can you just give me the course? I actually have, it's, well, we're building this. It happens to be Black Friday. So I do have a Black Friday special, which is in my Instagram bio. So there is a course that's like, do it on your own type of grab your Instagram. It includes a training all about Instagram Reels. So if you are like, cannot pay me enough to point, sing, or dance, I've got something for you. It's inside of that. So there's a do-it-yourself course. And then I also have this really cool way, time is of the essence as a side hustler. Um, and so I also have something called a VIP day that's done in Voxer, which gives you the chance to drop questions to me. We never have to get on a Zoom call. It's just all done via Voxer where we message each other. I send videos if I need to. Um, but that's a really cool way if you're busy and you're thinking like, I, I really want to get to work with you, um, but I just cannot fit another thing inside of my schedule, grab a Voxer VIP day. And those are also on sale right now. Ah. <laughs> I know it's like a wholesale weekend, right? Between the Black Friday, the Cyber Monday, the Small Business Saturday. It really is. And I always, I, I did this post, you know, it's really just flash sales. Like we're all just flash sailing something, whether it's, and so it just happens to be a flash sale after we have in the United States eaten a lot of turkey and spent time with people we either love or maybe don't love. Um, it all depends <laughs> on your family, but it's just a flash sale. And I, I think, you know, we can all get caught up in it or you can just say like, this is a flash sale. This is a time for me if I need something to grab it. Mm -hmm. And there'll be another flash sale. Listen, if, if now's not the time for you to work with me, but I'm sure there'll be another flash sale. Let's see. January 1st is coming around. <laughs> no, right. right. There'll be another flash there's, sale. There's, there's President's Day. Who knows? <laughs> but I would love to work with you. If, if this is the flash sale for you, definitely grab it. Yeah. I mean, I know that, you know, I know your work through the advance and just from knowing you. Um, I know that my friend Amy from Amy Joe Pilates is also working with you right now. Um, I also brought her into the advance. Um, and her social media looks great. Well, thank you. Yeah, she does. 
and that's the cool thing I think that happens too. We can get caught up in thinking it's, I always tell people when I work with you, it's not just about social media. I'm not here just to get you numbers. I want you to show up and feel in alignment, feel intentional in your social media. And what happens when you feel in alignment and you're intentional in your social media is other things happen too. Whether it is that you decide on a new way of being in your business, that's happened for me too. Um, but I'm not here just to tell you to like post more and do this more. I want you to, to do what's right for your business and the path that you want to move forward on social media and in life. Wonderful. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. So DMing through Facebook, Instagram, is that really the best place to find you if people are trying to reach out? Yeah, I usually answer my DMs quicker than my um, emails. And of course, you can find me on all social medias at Monica Monfrey, except for on Facebook, I'm Monica Scantleberry. Um, and also I'm on Clubhouse. So I'm doing a Clubhouse on Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Patricia, who is a part of our um, our pod. We are now in a mod together. And we'll be doing that every Tuesday for the rest of December. So, Oh, fun. Maybe I'll pop into that. Yeah. Come on, say There'll be no bro selling there. There'll be just good vibes. <laughs> No, seriously, you know totally what I mean. I, I, I actually, a quick story before we go is several years ago, my friend Amanda Tress, um, who founded Faster Way to Fat Loss, um, grew, grew that from like four clients to like 50 million in under 10 years. Yeah, like power house, I'm telling you. But she went to a business development um, conference with some well-known bros and she came back from it kind of scathed it was very funny <laughs> like all of her all of her posts and interviews for the next while were just about what a bro press it was and how silenced in a way all of the women there felt even though many of the women had bigger businesses than a lot of the men. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that is very, very interesting. So when I moved into the online space, I've become extremely strategic about who I hang out with. Yeah, it's so important. It's so, and I mean, there's also like the flip side too. Now there's all these like feel good people and you're like, okay, there's got to be a balance. We have to like still ask for the sale. We have to be able to right. win. It's not one or the other. It's an and, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of, you know, bro marketers yeah. everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> which is fine. We don't have to do that. And that, you know, at the end of the day is the biggest lesson is we can market the way we want to on our own terms. And if you get a little bit of guidance and a little bit of help from somebody like Monica, it will just be easier for you. Right? It will just make it easier because we can't not do it. Unfortunately, we have to do it. It's Any which way. It. And this is, you know, again, social media, it is free. It is social. And if we can, I always like to think like, I'm just going in here for what it can offer to me. It's an opportunity. I get to do this. I don't have to go door to door like people back when I was living in Wisconsin and people would come ring your doorbell and you would go and hide behind the curtains for a little bit so that nobody would know. You don't have to do that now. You can- Oh, door to door, the the coupon emailer. Remember the coupon mailers? Do you remember those? Because I used to do those. The copying for billion brochures and getting the brochure holders and then going around to local businesses. Yeah, we don't have to do that. If you could put your brochures out. I mean, I ran an entire Pilates studio award winning prior to the internet. Before the internet. <laughs> we can't and we get to, right? We get to show up. So we get we have this yeah, amazing yeah. opportunity and I you know, I'm grateful for it. I would have to say this. If it wasn't for social media, I wouldn't have had a yoga business. I wouldn't have had yoga clients. Um, I wouldn't have had this this growth in a year and I wouldn't have a lot of people like even you, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten to know you because I found it up the advance through my friend, Martha, who mm -hmm. I met through social media, right? It all comes back down to it. And so. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
that's the magic. All right, Monica. Thank you so, so much for joining us and for helping uh, my watchers and listeners navigate through uh, visibility on Instagram and Clubhouse. Um, so hang out with me for a second when we're done. Um, so everybody, you're going to get in touch with Monica if you need her. And I encourage you to do so anyway. Even her free stuff is awesome. So GM her, go to her email, go to her website, go to her Instagram feed, find her. Um, she's connected with me everywhere as well. So if you're connected with me, you're going to find her as well. Um, and just get in touch with her because she really can and will help you. So have a great rest of your Sunday, everybody. And I will see you guys soon. Bye. Thank you.